Alaska. I am clinging on to whatever ounce of energy I have left. I feel like it's a teaspoon. You know, I'm really trying to keep it positive energy and like up energy, but I cannot complete that task. It's just been kind of a mind fuck these past few days. As you guys know, or maybe you don't, I have been having some health issues. I was really nervous to take that step and figure out, you know, what exactly is wrong with me and what's wrong with my body. Cause I could just tell that there was something not right. I've been having weird issues with my feet. They started to tingle and burn and I started getting really bad fatigue. Tired all the time, no matter what I did. And it was like a really hopeless feeling. So the last video that I posted was the first part of this journey, I suppose. But this video is gonna be my diagnosis and I had to wait a few weeks and that's why it's taken a long time. So yeah, this video is really raw. It's not embarrassing, but it's just like, I wasn't gonna post this cause I didn't want this on the internet, but then I was really thinking about it and I was like, maybe this will make someone feel less alone if they're going through health issues or if they have gone through health issues. And I wanna feel less alone. I feel alone in this shit, it's been really frustrating to figure this out I've been trying for years but yeah so I will check back with you guys at the very end I encourage everyone to watch the whole process just so you guys get the full experience but before we get started we do have a sponsorship take it away past Sarah today's video is sponsored by <laughs> ExpressVPN Sending data over an unencrypted internet connection is like sending a postcard. Your message is exposed and wide open for the mailman and any other nosy person to see. Whenever you're connected to an unencrypted internet network on your phone, computer, tablet, TV, etc. You are sending all that info into the digital world and it can be seen by many different parties before they get to the intended destinations. Scary! But with a VPN, it creates a secure tunnel between your device and the internet. In other words, it puts an envelope around your postcard, your information. So you can go ahead and like watch porn and not look over your shoulder or feel like you're being watched. Just do your thing. It can't be seen by the government, hackers. It can't be seen by your internet provider or ExpressVPN. And on top of all of that, many websites or apps are blocked or restricted depending on where you are in the world. ExpressVPN allows you to reroute your connection to a server in a country of your choice, making geo restrictions a thing of the past. And I've been using ExpressVPN for years years and one of my favorite shows of all time is Modern Family especially when I'm in a sad mood and I just want to laugh but I can't watch it on US Netflix so what do I do I go on ExpressVPN find Canada in the drop down menu or wherever you want to be from for the day it's super easy to connect you just push the big round button that says connect and now you're in Canada a. And then you go back on Netflix, you type in Modern Family, and she's right there. Find out how you can get three months of ExpressVPN for free by visiting expressvpn.com slash sarabaska or clicking the link in the description below. Thank you so much ExpressVPN for sponsoring and let's get into the video, y'all. Woo! Thank you, Pat Sarah. Hope y'all enjoyed it. I'll see you at the very end. So... I hate that I'm always wearing this shirt when I'm with you. It's just embarrassing. Are you really? That's another uniform. So Ryan was an angel and he picked me up at eight in the morning and took me all the way to Santa Monica. Once again, no answers. I'm so annoyed. I just want an answer. The doctor looked over my x-ray. He said that my spine looked okay. I had to get blood work from my other doctor. And so he wanted to review my most recent results. So my other doctor had to transfer those results over to him and he looked at the blood work and he was like yeah the tests that they ran on you are kind of useless i just had to pay so much fucking money and i had to order like 10 new blood tests and they're testing me for like a bunch of other things you have a sliver lining them what was that you have a sliver lining them getting closer and i really really like this doctor i was excited for ryan to meet him because he's funny he's like a dad he just gets straight to the point no bullshit like he's nice what? but he, he treats me like a little kid and i love it like he treats me like i'm his child and it's really comforting like he's like concerned about me 
Looks like Nat Wolf's dad. We don't actually know what Nat Wolf's dad looks like, but we are assuming that he. I was would gonna be Google nervous. it, and then I saw his daughter, so I didn't. He's awesome. And then he got like deep with us. I don't know what it is, but like strangers that I meet always like tend to open up to me <laughs> about random things. Like he told us about this crazy, I guess, spiritual experience that he had, where he realized that he had to like get a divorce with his wife. And I'm like, okay, three so times. We're, he yeah. So he told us that he was divorced three times, and now I want to know like what his baggages and like why he keeps getting divorces and like what is his issue we're married yeah yeah but yeah i just wanted to update you guys on that no idea when my next appointment is because i have to schedule these fucking blood tests and hoping that these tests will just tell me fucking something so i can take some next steps i'm just sick of having health anxiety and then he also said that like my liver wasn't doing well like my liver enzymes nor is mine oh. so I'm literally going through my blood test comparing it to yours as he was reading it whatever that neuro thing is was yours was high and mine was like below good white blood cells right yeah i guess so uh, low and he was like this one's pretty high so i was thinking maybe you have diabetes and i was like what and then he was like but, but then i scrolled down a little bit and then this means that you don't have diabetes and i'm like okay so like what so yeah i'm fucking pissed but it's fine. I'm just grateful that I'm even capable of getting help. Are and you also, mine just have a bacterial, right? Isn't that kind of what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, like an autoimmune. Because your white blood cells higher. Like, I literally feel like he's speaking to me in a different language when he's telling me all this shit. Because I'm like, I can't retain any of this information. Like, I have no idea what you're talking about because it's just so complicated. But basically, he's white fights bacteria. So he thinks that there might be a bacterial infection inside of me that my body has been fighting off for years and I just don't know what it is. So that's weird. It's so crazy to think about that like inside of my body that's just happening. <laughs> like my white blood cells are just like going off right now. They're just popping off right now. You're just an animal and it's <laughs> fighting a disease possibly inside you, but then you're also fucking blogging. Yeah, yeah, like I wish that I could see on a screen what my body's doing on the inside. Yes. I want to see what it looks like when my food's being digested. Mm, Pieces like you want of the magic food. School it. Yes. Did you see that video of that man who got swallowed by a whale? No. Wait, you haven't? Where? Oh my god, it went viral. It's this man who was, I don't know if he was surfing or if he was just like... Wait, he survived? Yeah, so... So like Pinocchio? A whale literally swallowed him and he just fell down the esophagus and he thought that he was going to like... Like Brown, this, yes, like, yes. Imagine just like being in a whale's stomach and just being like, I can't die immediately. Like I just have to wait this out or like die from starvation because I can't eat in here. I found the like, blowhole just got popped out. I what, guess. Do you know what kind of whale it was? I don't know. Okay. I didn't really read into it. I should read into it. But he either got blown out of the mouth again. It like projected him out of the mouth mm -hmm. or the blow. I'm not sure, I need to read up on that, but somehow he made it out of the whale. But I'm just like, how crazy would that be to be sitting in a whale stomach and like seeing the organs? And I then think like, it's probably just pitch black. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> no, you know, you, it's literally- There's a little light. I always fucking say it, that'd be my worst nightmare. Honestly, oh that my would, God. Just, you're claustrophobic, you know you're gonna die. Why did I think that you could like see in there? I know, like, honestly it's like, a flashlight. I hope he has like a, I thought it was like on a tube at least, just like yeah. floating in there. It's well, like the yeah. water Park. Are we like, sure this is real? Because I really don't believe it. I swear, I'm going to stop this right now and find it. I'm so update. He wasn't in the actual whale's stomach. He was in the throat and the whale spit him out after 30 seconds. So that's fucking traumatizing. One in a trillion. Crazy. You know how your insides are like another universe? Realistically, they could have their own world inside of you. It's so crazy to think about that each cell in our body, it's like its own universe. Literally. Mini universe and there's billions of them. And how like your eye looks like the universe. So we are like continuously another fucking universe. Yeah. The fact that we have a pineal gland releases DMT when we die. Part of our brains gets released after we die. So like, how do you not believe in spirituality? You know what I mean? Well, you know the biggest devil worshiper on his deathbed said, oh my God, everything I've been teaching is not true. And he saw the light. Isn't that crazy? Wait, what? Did, Did he die? Um, 
I need you to watch an hour video. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm like an emotional girl these days ever since I started microdosing. He's feeling his in. emotions again, guys. Like I cried for my first time. I think it's ever since you did psychedelics, you were able to tap into your emotions easier. Well, yeah, my first bad trip, I had like a year recovery, which is why you shouldn't fuck around with it. Because you felt all of your emotions for the first time all at once. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't have PTSD from that experience, but now with microdosing, incredible. It's also fuck Jamie Lynn Spears. Just, I fucking hate her. I hate her. She's useless, she's daddy's favorite, and like literally tone deaf, she already posted. Have you Father's Day, the best dad in the world. She's like, you guys are all And getting, she posted yeah, that? They're all living off Britney, it's disgusting. And that's when you are selling your souls to the devil. It's like, it's all morality. Yeah. People don't have morals. If you're making a lot of money, it's easy to be like, yeah, you know? But mm -hmm. then you get to tap back into the humanity part where this is a real person. Yes. Fuck the court system. Everyone should be scared of the court and the police because it's no one has your back. Fair. Unless you have money. Yeah, there's my ex's house. We love having to drive by it all the time. Thank you, Ryan, he's the best. For Always. taking me to my appointment and holding my hand. My doctor said I had clammy hands and it was so embarrassing. <sighs> That's his fault for touching. He literally didn't even touch them. He just observed. That's our little rant. Bye. We love you, Brittany. It's so fucking hot. <laughs> Just walking to my car, I almost had a heat stroke. Sorry if the audio sucks. I have to turn on the air conditioner. It's so fucking hot. And I'm looking rough. I'm feeling rough. Let me take out my nicotine gum. I've been at the doctor's all day. I just got a bunch of blood work done. I had to go to this one place that was 30 minutes away from my house. I had to get 12 tests done on this arm. So much blood, I couldn't even look. Usually I think the blood tests are fascinating and I like looking at the tube. This time, oh my God, I, like this was the longest time I've had a needle inside of me and it hurt pretty bad this time. And then after that, I had to drive 30 minutes the opposite direction and I had to get more blood work done on my other arm. And that time was a fucking nightmare because that specific place, it's walk-ins only, like you can't make an appointment. I got there at like 10 in the morning and they opened at nine. I thought I was like on my shit. There's gonna be no line false. There was three people in front of me. There was only one lady that was doing the tests. <sighs> and so I had to wait like an hour and a half because, oh God bless these children. Oh, I don't know why it was like, was there like a kid's discount today for blood work? I don't fucking know, but there were so many little children in that place. And it's not a pediatric place. It's literally just a laboratory where they draw your blood and send it out to an actual lab. I'm sweating. There was these two little boys in front of me in line and they were so fucking cute. They were like, they had to have been four. They would not sit still and I get it. It's scary as a little kid getting a needle in you, but they wouldn't sit still and they were like screaming and crying for, I'm not kidding, 30 minutes before they were able to even get the test done. They were just not having it. And it's a small little room. The waiting room is like right next to the actual room and it's like an open room room so there's no closed doors so you can just hear everything and you can like see it there was like this clear window that you could like see inside and I didn't want to look because I felt bad for the little kids but oh my god it was really rough to like witness that I felt so bad like I've never heard a child screaming for that long like in that much terror and I felt so bad for the mom because the mom was so stressed trying to calm her kids down and like I was really understanding obviously I'm not gonna like freak out that it's taking so long but my god and it was crazy because like while i was waiting like an hour in everyone started coming at like 11 o'clock the line was out the door people were like sitting in the hallways it was chaos and it was one little room and just just a line out the door and just screaming children oh my god that was a lot <laughs> So anyway, I went to my eyeglasses place because I needed to get a new eye exam and schedule that. And I walked in, this little kid looked at me and said something, I think about my bandages, about my arms. And I was like, oh my God, I hope these people don't think I'm like on heroin. So I sat down with one of the eye doctors and I was like, before you say anything, I'm not on drugs. I swear, I just got my blood drawn. She was like, oh my God, I didn't even know 
what is that? She's like, it's crazy what our minds tell us about what other people are thinking. And it's like, yeah, but also that little kid said something to his mom. And it was even worse because after I was talking to the eye lady to schedule my appointment, I was like, can I use your bathroom? I had to pee really bad. She was like, yeah, sure. So it seems like I'm doing heroin even more by going to the bathroom right after I just told them I'm not doing heroin. This is just my anxiety right now. It's been a day and it's only 1.30, but I feel really good. I got all my blood work done. Everything's being sent over to the lab. I'm gonna know my results in a few weeks. I just pray that the results are gonna come back through these tests. Okay, sorry, my other doctor just called me in the middle of that. She just wanted an update on my neurology shit, my blood work. She just wanted to see how it went. So my white blood cells inside of me are, are fucking in battle and they're just starting fights with something so there's something in me there's like a disease or a bacteria inside of me and my white blood cells are in fight or flight and so i just told my doctor right now on the phone that and she was like can you tell your body to just like make love and not war i'm like exactly so that's fun but yeah i'm about to go to this hair shop and pick up my new hair i just picked up my hair God bless. I'm feeling optimistic. I love this security guard. Oh shit. The security guard was the one that came outside and handed me my hair. Oh my God. I wanted to get my car washed today, but I didn't have time. My car on the outside has never been this dirty. It's barely even white. In the inside, it's fine. Like the inside of my car is pretty clean. It's just the outside. I can barely even see through my windshield. There's like speckles of scattered bird poop and whatnot. I don't even know if that's bird poop. I don't even know what it is. Like dead bugs. And it's making me feel bad. I'm like, fuck, I'm so sorry, you guys. I'm really annoyed because I went to Ulta to get makeup and these bitches thought I was stealing shit. I don't have a per- I'm quirky. I don't wear purses. I wear backpacks. I don't know why I'm super hypersensitive to this shit, but I can't stand having more weight on one part of my body than the other side. Carrying a purse, you put it on one side of your body and it just like messes up my weight distribution. <laughs> Does that make, and I'm just super, I hate it. So I wear backpacks and I have this really cute backpack. Love it. I have like 20 different backpacks in different styles that match my outfit. But I wore my backpack into Ulta and I was getting eyed, eyed down by the people that work there. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm just too much of a weenie. Like I just have too much anxiety to do that anyway. I accidentally stole something in a Halloween store like a few years ago, I just remember walking out to the parking lot and having something in my hand and being like, oh, and my friend was like, it's fine, just keep it. And I was like, I can't. And I went up to the, someone at the Halloween store. I'm like, I'm so sorry. She was like, oh, it's fine. And I'm like, oh, I thought that you were gonna like praise me more. I don't know, whatever. But yeah, the Ulta ladies thought I was stealing shit. There wasn't that many people in the store. You know in Ulta, they have those little microphone things and they can talk to each other. I saw a lot of them doing that. I was like, okay. And then you know how right when you leave the store, there's obviously those like security things. I wanted to like walk through it and then turn around and be like, but whatever, I'm privileged. I'm gonna go in my house. Finally, I've been up since seven in the morning. I'm so tired. Okay, bye. This is um, a vulnerable moment. Usually when I get super anxious about things, I just tend to brush it off and ignore the problem or the situation and just like not deal with it until like things really blow up in my face and i'm like really like actually like really fucking scared and i didn't want to like show you guys how scared i was because i didn't want to like scare you guys but like i've never like felt this way ever i thought it was only 16 tests but i realized that it was like actually 24 no 26 tests not 16. i had to take 26 blood tests today i know that it's something serious because of the symptoms that i've been having i just never wanted to deal with it i just didn't want anything to become 
super serious. I know that I'm not gonna freak you guys out. You guys wanna know what's going on in my life. But I don't know, I guess I feel this overwhelming pressure that I have to be okay all the time. When in reality, this is what's going on. So I love you guys. Thanks for watching. And I don't know what's about to come out after this, but we'll transition into that. So these are thyroid antibodies. Again, there's just, there's a measurement of whether your immune system is tagging your thyroid or any of the tissue. So these are the two ones we look at that create something called Hashimoto's, which eventually develops into hypothyroidism. We look at these like both from a disease model and a functional model, but this is the left interval. You can see you're way high. So this means that your thyroid is also intact. So you have the diagnosis of Hashimoto's thyroidism. But when it gets to be over like 240, 250, I start going, hmm, what's going on there? The triglycerides we want under 100. So when the triglycerides are high, that can develop into fatty liver. Your LDLs are really high, we want that under 100. This isn't a fabulous lab for a woman your age. This puts your coronary heart disease risk at a little bit high here, 1.1 on here. Don't be freaking out about that. Homocysteine, again, you're within range, but I'll tell you that we want it below 12 for good heart function and we want it below 7 for brain function. So what? That's, so what? I'm, I'm 12? You're 12.1. When this gets elevated, it tends to be destructive to the blood vessels. So along with your high cholesterol, your high lipids, we don't like seeing that number high. The smallest blood vessels are really in your brain, right? Some mm -hmm. of your heart. So I like to see this below 12 to make sure that we're not destroying blood vessels that are below seven for the brain. Because your immune system is tagging the thyroid. When it's eating away from the thyroid, it means you're, it's destroying the tissue that makes T4 and T3. Okay. So it's not showing up yet on lab, right? So if you if you went to your typical endocrinologist, you'd be like, eh, no, nothing. There is something because you have an immune problem more than you have a thyroid problem at this point. Okay. And so that's what the feet issue is too, you think? Yeah, because you're, you're developing these, these antibodies against peripheral nerve tissue. Right okay. Here. And your cerebellum, which isn't cool. The okay. way that I work this is I um, need to do additional testing. I need to work with you for a few months. We need to make massive dietary changes for you. I need to look for other infections. I'd be setting up for probably a six month program like once a week for about 12 weeks, and then like twice a week for a couple months, and then like once a month for the remaining months. You're looking at a lot of money. How much money? You're looking at thousands. Like how many thousands? Like probably around thousand dollars. But that would include my fee, the amount of supplements we'd have to do, and additional retesting. So what I have to do is test, and then I have to retest to make sure I know I've fixed what I've fixed or what I say I need to fix. But we need to put you through a process where I'm following up with you, we change your diet, like you're young right now. We want to stop this in its tracks. We don't need you going down the road and getting sicker in the future. Okay. So, Sorry. No, it's, I understand. I make a lot of people cry in here. <laughs> Usually before 11 o'clock. So I'm <laughs> well ahead, I'm well in advance of that. <laughs> so the problem for me is like, if you're not super disciplined, then you're probably not super disciplined around like changing this stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, we can work it out a little bit differently with you. Um, I'll try and modify it. The reason that I don't typically like to do that is I want to make sure that you get a really strong result. Yeah. Then we look down here and your lipids are, are a little upside down. So your cholesterol is a little on the high side. So what we look at is how to um, diminish the triggers to your immune system. So any kind of infection is going to trigger that, right? Mm -hmm. Any kind of hormonal imbalance, insulin surges, all those different things can trigger your immune system. So what I, my job is, is I see it going forward is to start to like knock down all the different triggers, the immune system calms down. It responds helpfully to an infection, not to... It's like this, like if there's a spider on my desk, I go like this. Your immune system, in this case, is like it pulls out the shotgun with boom! <laughs> and it blows the desk away and half the table away and the floor away just to kill a spider on Okay, so now it's starting to like attack my nerves. Correct, that's why you have the tingling and the burning. That's why you have those sensations. Okay. Is that what's causing a lot of my fatigue and like brain fog, you think? I like, think it's both. I think you also have antibodies against your, um, against synapse, which is a neurotransmitter, but it's also against your cerebellum, so that's part of it too. So when I clean up your diet and put you on a strict program, and start to, so that's the other thing, like I would start you with like a three week cleanse, a metabolic cleanse to A, work on your liver and reduce what's called the antigen load to your system, which is all the proteins that you put in from your diet that make your system go, what the going on here? And they start freaking out. Mm. That's the starting point for somebody like you. Okay. Because whether it's me or somebody like, it's important that you take care of this. So what's next? You're just gonna I'm, create I need a to put plan. together like, what, here's the test, here's what needs to happen, okay? Cool. Thank you so much. My pleasure. That was very so, clear and there is hope for you. concise. Okay. <laughs> you're not going to die, at least not today. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. <laughs>
Bye. <sighs> so frustrating. I don't even know what to think right now. He said that my test was not good for someone my age. Apparently my body's just attacking fucking everything. God. I'm just glad that, you know, we finally have answers. And I'm just glad that we can move forward and I can start working on it. But also, the treatment plan is $1,000. Like, what the fuck? Bro, what the fuck is going on? Hey. Hi. One sec. Your shirt. So I walk in and I sit down and he's being very like nice and it's freaking me out because he's a sarcastic dad and being like, I don't want you to freak out. We know what's wrong with you and it is an autoimmune. Basically, have you heard of um, Hashimoto disease? We have Hashimoto's. Hashimoto? Yeah, I have heard of Hashimoto's. And apparently it's like really extreme case. The number one symptom is fatigue, depression, memory lapses. And that's why my feet are numb and tingly all the time because it's like a, it like doesn't know where to attack. When he said the word, what is it, Hashimoto? I was like, what the fuck is that? It's Hashimoto. Hashimoto. <laughs> Hashimoto. Did he say it's pretty treatable? I know it's a pretty severe level. He said it is, but it's just gonna be like a long process. I don't know if it can go away completely. I still need to also do my research. I've been on the internet the entire time I got back, but I just have to like completely change my diet. I can't eat fast food whatsoever. I can't eat processed food whatsoever. Like stay away from pasta and like grains and shit. No sugar. Um, no cheese, no dairy. Yeah. He was gonna create a diet plan for me. And then every week I have to like write down what I eat and stuff and like show him that every week. Supplements every week to take and like measure my shit out every week for six months. It just um, sucks that I have to like not restrict, but like yeah. be so conscious about food. Like I, yeah, and it might not be forever. It might be in this period where you're doing treatment right now and then you'll have to maybe readjust your relationship with other foods while you're getting the medication and getting your hormones back to a regular level and then adding maybe back in some foods to see. Yeah, like I don't wanna develop an eating disorder through this and like think of all of these other foods as bad. But also I know that if I eat them, it will make yeah. my disease worse so, so foods are not bad right and then some foods don't gel well with certain people because of stuff they cannot control yeah right that's not demonizing any food yeah as good or bad it's have you heard of the process of intuitive eating how i explain to people who have allergies it's like or something like this it's you're trying to see what your body feels good with and it sounds like there are just some that it doesn't feel good. So it might have to be a different relationship, which really sucks. Yeah. And it's really cool that you are able to notice, like, I don't want to go down a bad path with this kind of stuff and talk through this stuff. Because you're 24 years old. That's really young. Yeah. You said that, right? Like, he said it's pretty rare to find it like this in somebody this young. To me, that, that sounds good because you don't have as much wear and tear on your body that's as true. you would as like a 40, 50 year old who just found this out. That's true. Because right? when did you start noticing these symptoms? Three years ago. Three it years was like ago. right when I moved to LA. So I thought the depression and fatigue and shit was just me adapting to not living at home. Thought I was just like a situational thing it just was never getting better and like i was telling you while i was there with you i'm like do i have like bipolar like why are my mood swings so up and down why do i feel fucking exhausted and why do i sleep through shit why do i not want to talk to people like why when this was never really a thing for me before why do i feel so fucking scattered 
So I'm just really praying that once I do this treatment, it's just gonna clear everything and be like, oh wow, <laughs> I'm not depressed. <laughs> like I'm not tired. So yeah, I'm just so happy that it showed the results on that piece of paper and I know. That's why I like this neurologist because he made me do literally every fucking test I can take so that he has some sort of answer. I feel like relieved and just like grateful because it just makes so much sense. Like, yeah, you're not crazy. You're making these things up. Like you have Hashimoto's disease. <laughs> yeah, but then I'm like body, what the fuck? But like love you, but like. It's genetic. I imagine someone in our family has it. Really? And hasn't gotten treated for it. Yeah, I'll probably go get tested for that. If you're feeling like anything, it's your body trying to tell you something. And I just wasn't really listening to my body. Growth, change, it's gonna be good. Your face? I'll be oh, fine. Lord. That's what I'm saying. I like, know. I don't want- I was in shock. Yeah. You'll be okay. It's just, holy shit. Yeah. The journey to getting that. I know. I always said in my head, I'm like, well, creative people, like the most creative people get depressed. And I would talk to therapists and I was talking out loud and I'm like, when I'm talking about my past things, like, well, like I've already accepted it and like, I don't let that affect me anymore. Maybe there are still some things lingering, but I just knew that this depression and tiredness was like something way different. It wasn't just mental. It was like, yeah, you do. Yeah, very strange how that works. Cause I, I literally would be like, oh my God, I'm like talking to someone and my memory is so bad. I'm dissociating so bad. I'm so tired and fatigued. Like I could literally go to sleep right now just talking to someone. And then like the next day I like won't remember the conversation. And then I feel bad cause I forget to like respond to people. Like I'm not cognitively performing. And then it's like, it like fucks up my relationships. And then that like sends me down like a spiral that it's literally all me that I'm just like shitty, but it's literally Literally just because I have a fucking disease <laughs> that I haven't been treating like the fuck <laughs> like, and I'm not saying that that's an excuse to like not be better at those things that I just said but it's like it makes sense in my brain why it's more difficult than it should be you know so that's good at least I am aware of that because that's all I want to do I want to be the best person I can be I want to like be a good friend to people I want to like have relationships and communicate and like want to be there so bad so if this process and treatment helps me and it like makes me like feel alive and inspired to like make videos because that's what I love to do and I randomly just hated making videos because I didn't have the mental energy to yeah. Processing myself. Yeah. Oh shit, I should probably text my client. Oh yeah, like, no, I'll let you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Keep me updated. But it's Thank not like cancer time. or like, I don't need to get brain surgery. Like everything's fine and treatable. Can you tell mom and dad now? Yeah. Are you actually? Mm-hmm. Okay, thanks for telling me. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> okay, love you. Okay, love you too. Bye. Bye. Oh, hey, it's me. Uh, yeah. I don't even really know what to say. Like, a part of me felt like I was losing it. I was just kind of in denial about it too because like, I'm so young. I don't have health issues. I should be thriving, like my body should be working. This is kind of how I'm describing how I'm feeling. It's almost kind of like a guilt that I failed my body when my body's done so much for me without asking it to. But also it's not my fault either because I guess it's hereditary, but I didn't even fucking realize, you know, how much of a blessing health is. I'm like looking at my body, I feel more compassion for my body. I just want to like tell my blood cells to chill. I get that y'all trying to help me, but you're, you're beating up the wrong bitch. Like stop. Y'all obviously saw, but I was just really emotional in the doctor's office when he was telling me the results. Part of it was, cause I knew it. 
I wasn't going crazy. It wasn't just depression. It wasn't just, I just slept to sleep. No, bitch. I'm dealing with a chronic illness and I didn't even know. It doesn't matter how many hours of sleep you get. You're fucking tired constantly. This is the best example that I can come up with right for brain fog it feels like you're sick the sinuses where you kind of get it feels weird up here all the time like it feels like i'm sick but no fever and no stuffy no like it's just like that fucking cloudiness over my head or it's it's almost like a hangover all the time without the headache it's just like you're in a constant daze and you try so hard to snap back into the moment but then sometimes you get dizzy too. It's really fucked up. Like I know what anxiety feels like. I've had anxiety attacks and panic attacks before. It's not anxiety. Dude, it's so fucking crazy. It got very dark there for a second because since I thought it was depression and it was, and I thought it was or like anxiety and I thought it was just like other shit. I just beat myself up so bad about it. Told myself I was always gonna be this way. No matter how much I tried, like I'll always slip back into a depression. Like some days it would take everything in me to force myself to get out of bed and like actually focus on something and like talk to someone. Like I know it seems like I was fine in a lot of my videos and even in the podcast. Y'all, that just, it took every bit of brain power to feel like a person. It like affected my relationship with my family because they just thought that I never wanted to talk to them because I never wanted to fucking pick up my phone because if I did one thing that day, I had no energy to talk to someone on the phone. And then when people would like ask me about myself or like how I'm doing, it was always the same fucking thing. And then they're like, have you tried therapy? Yes, but talk therapy is something that isn't it's like physical symptoms. And they're like, okay, well, do you exercise? I'm like, that doesn't, that's not it. And they're like, okay, well, have you checked your thyroid? And I'm like, yes, bitch. I guess Hashimoto's disease doesn't show up on like regular blood tests. You have to get um, a thyroid antibody, which is, I guess, hard to get. A lot of doctors, I guess, don't automatically go that route. But since I was in desperation, my neurologist tested me for everything. So that's the only reason why I found out. But apparently by taking like a regular blood test, it'll say that my thyroid levels are fine, but this isn't hypothyroidism, it's immune. So it's just different, but it attacks the thyroid. So watch so many YouTube videos about other people's experiences. Everyone's symptoms were the exact same as mine and I was literally crying watching some of these YouTube videos because I felt so validated and I it just felt so nice to hear someone go through the exact same day to day it's almost like you're gaslighting yourself like you're making yourself feel crazy crazy and so are other people. I guess it's really hard to diagnose. And I was watching this one girl's YouTube video. A lot of people with Hashimoto's get misdiagnosed as it being bipolar, which really validated me because I was just telling my sister the other day that I like thought that I was bipolar. Um, yeah, and I just learned a lot about how to manage the symptoms, how to even, there's this fucking book. Every girly's YouTube video that I've seen about it, one out of three talks about this book. It's like a bestseller. It's called Hashimoto's Protocol, a 90 day plan for reversing thyroid symptoms and getting your life back. And it's just a step-by-step -step process. So I'm gonna be reading this every day. My doctor said that he has to put me on a really strict nutrition plan. Like I can't have fucking cheese. Like that sucks. I but I know there's lots of like vegan options. So I don't know, it's, it's just like, I have to reprogram my brain and like want to, but I do want to, like obviously I want to be healthy and I want to feel better, but yeah, I'm still trying to stay positive.
really grateful that I have a name to this shit. Like I have a name to these extreme debilitating symptoms. I'm not gonna let my white blood cells control me. I'm not gonna let my fucking thyroid control me. You know, it's like I can control most of the symptoms if I really want to do that. And I want to do that. It's gonna be hard, but I just fucking have to. It's like part of self-love and self-care. I think that although it's gonna be fucking hard, I think that it's going to change my life. It's gonna make me really appreciative of just my body in general and just kind of like feel more connected to my body, which is kind of weird, but for these past few years, I have not felt connected to my body whatsoever because of my symptoms. Like I literally was so confused and it made me kind of literally hate my body and like hate my brain. Like I was so mean to myself. I was pretty fucking negative because I didn't know why I was like this. Cause I knew I shouldn't hate myself cause I'm cool, but I just hated the way I fucking felt. And it, yeah, it made me, it got dark. But if y'all have any, you know, great recipes without gluten, dairy, sugar, hit me up. Or if y'all have any like good Instagram accounts to follow about this shit, or just like, I'm already on the Reddit thread. I'm already a part of the Reddit community, bitch. I just needed to be looking at a thread of people all with the same concerns as me. So that's been helpful, but you know, this is for my body and I love her. And now it's my turn to give back to her because my body has been doing so much for me, you know? Also, yeah, it's like, do I stop taking my antidepressants since I know like what's going on? Or do I also, this is something I need to talk to my doctor about, not y'all. I'm also just like, okay, so have I ever been depressed? Was that not depression this entire time? I've always had anxiety. I don't know, y'all. It's crazy. The body is nuts, and so is the brain. When I'm eating and I'm like swallowing food, my body is just like fucking categorizing shit, putting shit here, putting shit here, putting shit here, putting it through my blood, sending it over there. Like, what the fuck? My body's just doing that. I literally feel like my white blood cells are my bodyguards. My thyroid's like, whoa, 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 I was invited here. And my white blood cells are like, what's your fucking name, man? It's not on my list. And my thyroid's like, yes it is. And then my white blood cells are flipping through the pages. They're like, oh, no it's not. But it actually is, they're just, Big bro bodyguards. And I feel like my thyroid's like a woman, like a hot, cool woman. And these men just like hate her. Just like won't accept her, I guess. But then also like, I love my white blood cells. Like they protect me, but just fucking chill. I talk to my body every day now, which is great. It helps me connect with it. And I feel more like connected with myself. You know, maybe this is what I needed. It's like this weird silver lining where it's like, maybe this is like the, Smack in the ass that I needed to like further my self. I don't know. I'm that type of bitch that always tries to find the good in things, even though I can accept that this is just annoying without trying to find the good in everything. But also like, I don't want to wallow in that. I don't fucking know, man. All I know is that I can't eat Taco Bell and that sucks. It is such a fucking privilege for me to just walk into a doctor and get my blood drawn and shit. I know that that's not possible for a lot of people. So, you know, I am really, really blessed that I'm able to even get an answer. So if you even have the resources or like the means to figure your body out, do it. And if you have health insurance, bitch, go to the doctor. If you feel weird, go to the doctor. I understand how difficult even just making that doctor's appointment is. So be gracious with yourself. I hope that this motivates some of y'all to like light a fire up under your ass. But I also don't want every single person to be like, whoa, my God, is there something wrong? You know, it's just like, listen to your body. Like your body's trying to communicate. My feet were screaming at me every night, but I'm like, oh, my feet. Just get hot. Let me go buy some ice pack socks. I literally bought ice pack socks. My bitch ass bought neuropathy essential oil that I would rub on my feet, but I wouldn't go back to the doctor and demand an answer. 
just do what you can. I love you guys. That's what I'm gonna end this with. I love you guys and thank you for always being a part of this journey and just know that if you have a Hashimoto's disease or an auto, auto I can't even speak. If you have an autoimmune disease, we're in this together. And we got this. Proud of us. And now I got Isabella's help. Love you, bitch. Okay, I'm gonna end this. Love you guys.